What's up, everybody? So, as promised, we're gonna start putting that new Stahl's 360IQ hat heat press through its paces, and we're gonna do that today by heat pressing some leather patches on some hats. Real quick before we get into it, if you're new here, welcome. Click that subscribe button, you probably won't regret it. And to all of you awesome people who are already subscribed, please do me a big favor and head over to Instagram and follow our shop page, Rogue Lab MFG. People are asking me all the time what kind of stuff we do here, what we're working on, etc. And that's where I show literally all of it. Not to mention that that's my main business, so that's what funds all of this to happen. So please go there and show some support, like some stuff, follow it, and that'll help us make more of this. That being said, let's get to it. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can get leather patches made with the heat seal backing so that you can heat press them onto basically whatever you want. These ones that I have in my hand right here are both done with lasers. The first ones are real genuine leather. These were made by Stalls and they are super high quality and with the real leather, you can get this really cool dimensional look if you have the laser set up right. So if you have a design that has a lot of depth, these are probably the way to go. And for bonus points, they also smell incredible. And the second one is synthetic leather. This is a vinyl based leather look kind of material which is very similar to what a lot of car seats are made of. And when it's hit with the laser, it gives it that really nice branded burned effect and it gives it a little bit depth not quite as much as the genuine leather does but still enough to be able to tell it's got some three-dimensional stuff going on there's also patches you can get done in stamped leather and there's also something really cool I've been seeing popping up recently with leather patches that have full color prints on them somehow now I have no idea how this works yet maybe they're being done in like a flatbed UV printer or something like that then laser cut I don't know this is something that I'm probably gonna have to deep dive later on in another video but it's something that's out there that you should be aware of obviously today I opted to go with the synthetic leather for a few reasons the first is I didn't need that added bit of depth and I also thought the design is better suited to that solid black burned in look and another reason is that these were actually made by a subscriber of the channel I don't have a laser yet I'm really hoping to add one here in the next few months or so but I know this guy does these things all the time and he's very good at it and a while back he sent me a very awesome gift for absolutely no reason at all which was cool of him to do so I figured I'd return the gesture and do a little business with him oh I love that lineup actually I think I got to move this for now this is probably the worst filming scenario I could possibly have going on sitting here trying to film a whole video in a tiny crappy little corner of my office that's better I think. So if you haven't already seen it, I made a whole video about this press already, unboxing it, explaining a bunch of the features, a couple of little quick tests, things like that. You can check that thing out from this thing popping up on your screen right here. And I've also put a link to this press down in the description below so that you can check it out for yourself, maybe even scoop one up. First, I'm gonna get my settings plugged in here and save them as a preset so I never have to worry about it ever again. I have done some testing before this video started to figure all that stuff out, clearly because I'm wearing one of them on my fat head right now. But what I found worked best for this particular setup was to run the lower platinum 300 degrees, the upper platen at 280 degrees, and do it for about 20 seconds with a pressure of around four or five, which is like a, a medium pressure. But let me be clear, these settings that work for me may not work for you, so do your own testing. Most of the people that make these things and will sell them to you, they'll give you a little bit of a guideline to follow, so that will get you very close and within the ballpark, and then usually you'll have to do a little bit of adjustments here and there, depending on what kind of hat you're using, what kind of cover sheet you're using, and a few other little factors. So with that all set up, here's a couple more tools of the trade that you're gonna wanna have around to heat print hats in pretty much any way. First up is some high heat tape so you can take your leather patch and position it and tape it down exactly where you wanna heat press the thing. Some scissors, that seems pretty self-explanatory after showing some tape. And then there's this thing. This, in my opinion, is probably the most important thing that you should have around your hat heat press at all times. This is the secret weapon to heat print hats without ever leaving any sort of a scorch mark behind in them, and it's the stalls flexible application pad. I've been using this thing for three years now and out of thousands of hats, I don't even know how many I've done in that time, but it's a lot. I've never left any sort of a scorch mark behind in any of them thanks to this. It's a high heat silicone rubber, I believe, and it's super stretchy, so you can conform it to all kinds of weird shapes. This is especially good for hats with flat bills because with the flat bill sticking straight up, sometimes the iron of the press will actually wanna drag down the top surface of the bill and will leave marks on it. So with this thing, you can cover the spot that you're pressing and kinda of overlap it over top of the bill and it'll conform to that no problem and you'll have no marks whatsoever. Honestly, I recommend everybody with a hat heat press, no matter what brand it is, to own one of these. It will make your hats so much better. Oh yeah, and I also, link that stuff down there for you. 
And lastly, the hat we're using today is the Yupong six panel flat bill snapback. This is probably the most popular flat bill snapback on the planet today, used by brands basically across the board right now. And I was gonna make these things in three colors today, but I'm an idiot and I don't know how to look into boxes properly. <laughs> I kind of just peeked into one box and saw a bunch of black hats, assuming that was a box full of the ones that I have in my head right now. So I just ordered the green and the heather thinking we're good to go. And well, it turns out that box full of black hats was not even close to the same hat whatsoever. <laughs> so we're making the green and the heather today. The black ones I'll make off camera during the week sometime. Either way, they'll be up on the site uh, sometime soon. Look at that, no crease marks like other presses leave up top, no scorch marks, no nothing. This thing is 99.9% .9 perfect. I did notice one tiny little thing that you're gonna be like, Seriously, dude. What I noticed is because that cover sheet has a little bit of a micro texture to it, is it kind of imprinted a little bit into the leather patch itself, which I'm sure is gonna disappear. I honestly can't even see it with my eyeballs right now. The only way I saw this was using the camera with the macro lens on it, but um, where the tape was holding down the leather patch, it didn't get that texture. That part still looks smooth, which again, I honestly can't even see it right now. So I think it's gone at this point, but I wanna make sure it is 100% uniform. So no matter what it does, everything just is perfect. So. What's cool about this press is you can actually set multiple time intervals in each preset. So I'm gonna change that 20 seconds to a 15 second press. I can lift it up, then peel the tape off and then give the final five seconds without the tape on it. And then it'll give it a perfectly uniform finish whether that micro texture stays in there or not. There we go, now these things are 100% perfect and I can move forward into production. But before I do that, I'll share a couple of cool little tips with you guys to make this a little bit easier. First one is when you load these things on there, not every hat conforms exactly to the shape of the plat and sometimes you got a little bit of wiggle room there. This one you can see it's got just a tiny bit, not enough to really cause us any issues, but enough that I'm not gonna take any chances. So with these ones, all I'm gonna do is just throw my cover sheet on and just press it quick for like five seconds and that'll loosen it up enough so that it sits down flat and now we can put our patch down on there nice and clean. The next one is when you're taping these things down on there using this tape, which you should be using this tape, please don't use normal tape, you'll definitely regret that. Um, try not to stretch the tape or stretch and pull down too hard on it because this tape is not very sticky and it's gonna just let go off of there. You'll think you'll get it all centered and nice on there and you're about to cover it up and then you'll see it go boop and you'll get pissed right off and start swearing and throwing things. I can't tell you how many times I've done that. So just kind of let it loosely sit on there. You just want it to kind of hold it in place from shifting or twisting. That's all you really want it to do. You don't want to reef it down on there. And one last thing with the tape is give yourself a little pull tab. Fold the ends over, the ones that obviously aren't on the patch. It'll make your life so much easier because when the stuff does get heated, that's when it actually does become kind of sticky. So once it's kind of on there, then you're gonna be picking at it with your fingernail and it takes forever. Give yourself a nice little half inch pull tab and you'll You'll be ripping through these things super quick. Well, I wanna see what this thing can do. So let's cue a little B-roll sequence so I can finally put this press to the test. Oh, that rhymed good. I got bars today. Um, holy shit, <laughs> that thing is awesome. This was my first real shakedown with it. I'd only done a very small handful of testers before starting this video, like four or five, and the single hat that I heat pressed in the unboxing video, that's literally it. But in the unboxing video, I had said something at the end, like they may have created the perfect hat heat press here, and 
I'm pretty sure I can confirm that at this point because that was incredible. First, there's the quality of the hats that came out of it. Everything was completely consistent. There was no creases, there was no scorch marks, there was no nothing. It was just a breeze walking through that stuff. Everything came out of there perfect, just time and time again. General operation of the press was miles better than the old one uh, with that big ass opening on there. Loading and unloading the hats was a lot easier. Lining up the designs was way easier because you can actually get directly over top of it now. So that was really nice. The heated lower platen really comes into play when lining up the designs because it kind of preheats and softens the adhesive a little bit on the back of whatever you're pressing. So you're able to line it up a little bit better and it's a little bit softer and easier to work with. So the tape isn't really having to work as hard because sometimes that stuff, like I said, wants to pop up. I didn't have that even once in what I do, 40 hats, something like that. So that was very impressive. And probably my favorite thing that I noticed today being a one man print shop and all is that I hauled some serious ass through those 40 hats. I did those things in probably less than half the amount of time that it would have taken me on the other press. Seriously, once I got into the flow of things, I was just boom, 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 knocking stuff out. And I was filming at the same time too. And usually trying to film and work at the same time is very difficult and very annoying to be honest. It's super cumbersome. It makes everything take way longer than it should. And I was able to do both things at once pretty seamlessly. And that has never happened in the history of me filming anything in here. So that to me, is worth every single penny that this press costs. So yeah, if we're into some kind of review of this press right now, then I'm gonna go ahead and give this two thumbs up and possibly even a boner as a third because I love this thing that much. But we're not done with it yet. I wanna test out more stuff with this thing and I'm actually gonna leave that up to you guys. So any suggestions you may have, drop them down in the comments below and I'll make a list of the good stuff I find in there and we'll put it to use on this thing and see what it can do. I think. I definitely wanna try the digital heat transfer vinyl next maybe or something else, I don't know. I've got a bunch of it hanging out with the printer out there and I really wanna use it because there's so much cool stuff you can do. And if you want one of those sweet hats we just made, they will be for sale on the Rogue Lab website. By the time this video goes up, the link is also down in the description below. And another reminder that the links to everything that we use today are also down there. So if you're wondering anything about the press, the cover sheet, the tape, any of that, it's all down there. Well, shit, I blew through those hats so fast that I'm actually gonna have a little bit of time to maybe start editing this thing right now. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you again in the next one. <laughs> what a shot this must be. Oh! <laughs> what are you looking at? Did I disturb you, sir? Are you serious? <laughs> and lastly, whoa. And lastly, the hats were eating. Fuck, I had it. Oh, my legs are killing me. Why do I always do this? I've done this in like five videos now. I've picked this weird filming angle where I gotta crouch and it takes me 30 takes to spit out what I wanna say and by the end of it, my legs are on fire.